Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. My name is Jeremy Walsh, and I'm the Director of Support, Training, and Documentation for BNI Connect. I'd like to welcome everybody to the web webinar today. Uh, today's webinar starts our first in a four-part series, uh, basically for leadership teams or people that are um, into the more, I guess, advanced or specialized sides of BNI Connect. Um, today, what we're going to be talking about is really the webmaster role in BNI Connect and how you can update your chapter websites and what functionality there is in order to be able to do that. What are some of the benefits of doing so? What are some of the limitations of doing so? Um, and how you go about and do that. Um, it is an introductory session, so we're going to go through the uh, the materials, but some more advanced stuff. If you happen to be a web programmer, um, happy to answer those questions uh, on another session. Before we get started with today's uh, topic, just a couple of uh, quick housekeeping things, the first of which is that this is a live webinar, so if you have any questions at all as we're going through the material, uh, the best thing to do is just ask. Um, You'll see a questions panel in this GoToWebinar software in that little panel. Uh, just type the questions in. They pop up on my screen, and I can answer them as we're going along. We're scheduled for about a half hour worth of uh, content or so. Uh, that said, if you have a bunch of questions, uh, I'm not limited to a half hour in my time. I'm happy to stay here until every single question has been answered. But I do like to be respectful and make sure that if you do have another appointment to get to at the bottom of the hour, that you're able to do so. We're also going to be recording this webinar, so you'll be able to watch it later. It will be available on our uh, support site, which you can get to by clicking on the question mark button in the upper right hand corner. And it is also available on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash BNI Connect Global. So let's go ahead and get started with today's content. And again, this is the chapter web pages functionality. Um, you know, one of the great things about BNI Connect is that you know, every single country and every single chapter. We have about 200,000 members around the world, and we're really all logging into and utilizing this same system. That means that there's a lot of stuff that we can really help to automate and make sure it's current and up to date. And one of those things is your chapter web presence. And every chapter out there has a chapter website that's available to be customized. It starts out as just a template through our CMS system. CMS is Content Management System. And essentially, BNI Connect is a giant kind of WordPress. It's not actually WordPress. It's just a, it's a common platform for you to be able to go in and update your chapter websites. Now, there's a lot of chapters over the years that have built their own chapter websites. Either the, you know, the web designer and the chapter has gone ahead and you know, just out of the goodness of their own hearts sometimes, just gone and made a chapter website. But what inevitably happens is they find it's really hard to keep up to date, especially if they're trying to get all the member information up there. One of the benefits of using the BNI Connect websites is that the information, as far as the roster goes and um, the speaker rotation and all of that, that will be always up to date. So all you have to worry about is you know, kind of creative content within the website itself. So let's take a look at what some of these uh, chapter websites look like. For that, um, we're going to need to go out to the internet, and let's just take a look at some of them. I'm going to go to my test area, which is AntarcticReferrals.com. This is a testing-only website that I use on the live system, uh, mostly for purposes like this. But let's say that we're out there, and we go to Find a Chapter. And I'm just going to do a search against all the chapters here in Antarctica. And these are all my chapters. We have the Burr chapter and the Chili Hillbillies chapter and the Frozen Assets chapter. Um, we can go and click on any of these chapters. And what we see is the list of all of the members in that chapter. And if we click on any of the members, we see their profile. But right here, we have a button that says Chapter Website. And if I click on Chapter Website, this will take us to the actual chapter web page. And this is a default, out-of-the-box chapter web page. Um, nothing on this has been customized. I actually just you know, recreated the entire site from scratch from the default templates just a few minutes ago. But you'll see that it does have some information already on here. So it has information about what BNI is. It has an updated thank you for closed business number that's automatically pulled from the system. That thank you for closed business is the last 12 months worth of data of uh, you know, from the POMS reports. 
So right now it's displaying May 1st, 2015 through April 30th, 2016. Once we get to next month, it'll then shift ahead a month and it will include this month's number. So it doesn't change on a weekly basis, it changes once per month. It also has the speaker rotation, so as long as your secretary treasurer is putting the speaker rotation into BNI Connect, it will automatically put it in here into the system for you. It has the leadership team over on the left-hand side. It has your chapter location. It has a link so somebody could click and visit this chapter and fill out an RSVP. It also has the list of chapter members. So if you go through any of these chapter members, you can click on somebody's profile, for example. Uh, let's see Alfred E. Newman here. And Alfred E. Newman's phone number and contact address. And all of this is kept up to date through BNI Connect. So if a member goes in and updates their profile in BNI Connect, they change their picture, they update their My Business description, whatever it might be, it's automatically updated here. So the websites are pretty straightforward, but they, there's been some chapters out there that have done some really interesting things with these. Uh, just to give you a couple of quick examples, I'm going to do a, just a, a Google search. Uh, the BNI Rugby chapter over in the UK, they're actually in Warwickshire. So this is their chapter website here that does show up right away in the Google search results. And here we have their website. You can see that they've decided to customize this and make a really long page here. They have some nice BNI graphics. They have a video about BNI, nice infographic video. We've got their chapter registration page there as well, uh, some testimonials, and they really cram a lot of information onto this page. They have their thank you for closed business down here, another video, a map to their chapter. You know, all sorts of stuff. They've also got their, you know, their chapter members. They've kept a, uh, a consistent theme here in the header between the pages. They also have a chapter gallery. Once again, they kept a consistent header. <clears throat> and they also have kind of a, uh, this is a photo gallery of various things going on in the chapter. Let's take a look at one other one here, uh, the BNI Golden Ideas chapter. Uh, they're out of San Francisco. And here's their web page. You can see that they've uh, done a slightly different approach. They kept theirs a little bit shorter, but they went with a two-column approach here. They still have a chapter map, a clickable chapter map. They have the uh, BNI logo. If I click hello here, it has a message from the current president. If I click on their chapter members, this is something that I'd never really seen before, before I saw them do this in their chapter. But this has all their chapter members, like any other one would. But up here, they created in the header a way that they could view them in power teams. Now this is an advanced coding uh, that their webmaster did, but essentially if I click on any of these power teams here, like the new house team, um, it would show me all of the members of the new house power team. So we could see we have the, you know, the cleaning person and we have the construction and we have the uh, landscape, residential real estate attorney, so all of these people that would be involved in that transaction, and again, that's something that they did um, you know, just using these BNI Connect sites. So the question is, how do we go ahead and do this ourselves in BNI Connect? So to do that, we do need to log into BNI Connect. So there isn't a separate website or anything else that you need to log into. Just log in with your, <coughs> excuse me, your regular username and your regular password into BNI Connect. That's where we're going to go. So if I just click on BNI Connect here, this will take me in to the system. This is the home screen. Now, in order to be able to edit the chapter website, you will be need you will need to have been assigned the role of chapter webmaster. Or if you happen to be in a leadership team position, uh, part of the executive management team, the the president the vice president, the secretary treasurer, or if you're a director consultant, 
you'll have the permissions to do so. And the easiest way to tell if you have the permissions to do so is that up here along the top, you see Network Operations, Reports, Tools, and Admin. If you see the Tools menu, more than likely you have access to update the pages. That is where we're going to go. So we're going to click on Tools and then go to CMS for the Content Management System. And from there, we're going to go to Chapter Websites. So Tools, CMS, Chapter Websites. And this brings us into the CMS or the Chapter Website functionality where we can edit any of the pages. Now, let me switch back over to my Shiver region here. Once you get into the CMS portion, you'll see all of the pages that you have access to edit. So if you're a director consultant, for example, you may see all of the chapter web pages within that region. Um, but if you're just the chapter webmaster for one chapter, then the only thing that you'd see is your chapter's web page listed here. By default, you'll see the link here. So this is the chapter web page. The, uh, it, it's a sub page of the regional domain, and the regional domain is antarcticreferrals.com. And because these are auto-generated, it created the name shiver-region-bni-burr. So that is the default name of the website. And if I click that, this will bring me to what the website currently looks like. If I want to go in and edit this, I'm going to click on the Options button here. And now we get into the back end of the website. So you see that this is broken into a couple of different sections. We're going to go through all these different sections here to show you what this is all about. Uh, this first tab here is the Pages tab, and this is basically the layout of the website. So for example, we have the Home page, the Chapter Members page, these subsections of the page, the gallery page, and the news page. So if I flip over to the website here, what we'll see is we have the home page, right? So that's the home page here. We have the chapter members page. Again, we have the chapter members page. If I click on a member, I'll get the member details. So Adam Sandler here, this is the member details subpage. And then we have the chapter details subpage. So that would be if I click on the name of the chapter here, this brings us into the chapter details subpage. And then the send message subpage. So if I click on send message, that brings us into this send message page. Then we have the gallery and the news. The news page is a special page and this is actually controlled through the operations menu. I'm not going to get into this today but it's a way that you could have a news feed on your site that the chapter can contribute to without necessarily having to go into the full website in order to edit it. And then there's a gallery page. Well you'll notice right now the gallery isn't there um, and that's because by default because it's a photo gallery um, it is hidden until you start putting things up there and you decide to show it. So right now it's hidden. If I wanted to show it, I would just click this Show button over here. Are you sure you wish to show the page? Yes. And if I go back here and refresh the page, it should be there, right? Well, not yet. One of the things about um, working on these chapter sites that you have to keep in mind is that when you're working on the site, you're actually working on a duplicate copy of the chapter site called the preview site. And this is really, this, this is your playground to go in and work with the site, get it as close to perfect as you want it to be before you then share it with the world. So for example, we have these two things down here. One is the preview site, one is the live site. If I click on the preview site, this now shows us the gallery. And this would show us any changes that we were making on any of these pages. But the page that the rest of the world sees is this live site here. In order to make our changes active, so we're going to take those you know, edits that we make and the pictures that we uploaded and all of that information, in order to make that active, what we do is we click this Publish button. 
that will take the preview site and all of the details about it and overwrite the live site. It is a one-way street. There is no undo button. So keep that in mind. Once you publish it, it is now live forever. So now that I published this, if I click on the live URL, we can see that the gallery page is now active. And similarly, if we're not going to use the news page, I could always hide that page. I can publish it. And if I refresh this, the gallery stays active, but the news page has gone away. All right, before I go into the actual content editor, uh, let's take a look at some of these other tabs along the top. Uh, this next tab over is the library tab. And the library tab is where you're going to store any images that you want to put on your website. In order for any pictures to display on your chapter website, you need to get those pictures onto the BNI Connect servers so that we can display those pictures for anybody visiting the website. You do that by uploading them into your library. Once they're in the library, they can become available for you to insert them into the website. So the first step is to upload those images. So we go to the library tab and we click the upload button. Now you'll have a chance to browse your computer for any images. So I could um, take a look here and let me go to Let's see, I'm going to go here and let's say I want to get this smiley face. I'm going to grab the BNI Connect Stay Connected and I'm holding down the control button um, and I can choose multiple things at once. I can choose up to three images at once. Uh, let's say I want this BNI Visitor one. I can click open. This will then upload those three and now these three things are in my library. If I need to upload more, I can just go back. There is no limit on how many things that you can upload. There is a limit to the size of each individual file. There is a five megabyte limit um, for an image. Seems like a lot, but you do want to uh, you want to keep the images small, um, at least in size, because especially if people are downloading these, uh, it makes for a faster responsive site. You can also upload documents if you'd like to link to documents on your page, let's say a visitor sign-in sheet or something like that. And nobody really uses this anymore. This is a, uh, an older CMS editor, but you could upload flash objects as well. The next tab over is the Site Information tab, and you really don't want to change too much on this page. Um, the, only, the only thing you may want to consider changing is this up here, the Chapter Folder Name. Now, as I mentioned a couple of times, this is an automatically generated site. So there's just on the back end, it just gets automatically created. But that means that the name of the chapter site can be a little bit, well, I guess, less than user-friendly, let's say. So right now, if I wanted to tell somebody, yeah, just go check out our website, I'd have to tell them to go to antarcticreferrals.com forward slash shiver dash region dash BNI dash 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 burr. Kind of a mouthful. So if you want it to be a little bit more user-friendly, you can always change the chapter folder name. So the domain name is going to stay the same, antarcticreferrals.com, but I could just make this, you know, BNI Burr if I'd like to. Then I could tell somebody to just say, go to antarcticreferrals.com forward slash BNI Burr. By the way, that's with three R's. The rest of this, uh, these are the buttons that exist in the upper right-hand corner of the page. You really don't want to change those. That will... We do like to keep those consistent uh, between all the chapter pages in the region. But if you do have an analytics code, so you can sign up for something like Google Analytics and figure out where people are um, you know, checking out the website and what they're staying on, what they're clicking on, how long they're staying, and all that wonderful stuff. Uh, you do just have to sign up with you know, Google or any of the other analytics companies and insert that code here, and that will then become part of it. Okay. Uh, I just got a comment to make the screen bigger. How's that, uh, Liz? Is that a little bit better? Just zoomed in. So the analytics code is down there. Uh, if you make any changes on this, of course, please hit the update button. 
That will bring us back to the home page. And to make this active, this new folder structure, you do have to make sure that you publish your page so that it can. Now go to antarcticreferrals.com forward slash BNI Burr. There is one additional tab here. Once you've activated the gallery, there will be a gallery tab. This is similar to uploading photos to the library, um, except they're stored in albums. So we just need to create an album and call this one Photo Album 1. Very unique and original. Give it a description and click Submit. This then creates our photo album and we can go in and upload photos to it. Now these photos we do have to upload one at a time uh, because we do have to give it a title and a description and all that wonderful stuff. Give this a title, stay connected, and we can upload that into this photo album. And you can, again, you can put pretty much unlimited amounts of photos and albums up there that you'd like. Some people use it. Um, I've seen a very interesting way that people use this in kind of like a blog fashion. Um, that works pretty well. And once again, if I publish this and head out to the site, you can see we now have a photo album here with a photo in it. All right, so now we're back to the home page here, and let's take a look at some of the things that we can do with the actual pages. Um, they pretty much all work the same way. Um, we have a couple of different options. We can edit the name. Editing the name changes the tab. So right here we have our home, our chapter members, our gallery. We can change the name of that. So let's say instead of, we, instead of at home, we want this to be our glorious chapter. And once that has been saved, we can go back to our preview URL, and you'll see that that has now changed. Instead of home, it says our glorious chapter. Now, meta tags. Uh, meta tags will help you with your SEO, with your search rankings. Um, I do not profess to be an SEO expert, search engine optimization expert. Um, that is a art form and skill in and of itself. Uh, I would recommend talking to the SEO person in your chapter if you aren't one already, and that will help you with the, the meta tags aspect of it. And finally, we have the last option here, which is edit content, and this is really the bread and butter of going in and editing your chapter website. If I click on edit content, this will bring us into the editor. Note what just happened here. Uh, you'll see that this just opened up in a whole new window. And I tell you, probably get a couple of support tickets a week just from people that say, hey, I keep clicking edit content and nothing's happening. And usually that's because you have some type of a pop-up blocker on. So if you just allow pop-ups on this page or temporarily turn off your pop-up blocker, you should be able to click edit content and it will bring you into the editing portion. So the first thing you'll notice is that we have a toolbar here that allows us to go in and edit this content in this section. There are a lot of things on the page that we can't change, and that's all of the dynamic content that's being pulled automatically from BNI Connect. For example, all of the leadership team information is what gets displayed down this left-hand side, and your chapter address and all of that, that's going to be pulled automatically from BNI Connect. Same thing with the chapter speakers down here. Those are going to be pulled automatically from BNI Connect, so you don't have to worry about those parts of the page. The only part that we're going to be working with is this central part, the content portion, the middle part of the screen. And I just notice I'm just dragging this little corner down here, the uh, kind of sideways triangle, so you can see more of the screen at one shot. Now, for those of you that are actual web designers uh, that are on the call with us today, you can click this source button here and be able to go in and directly code in HTML if you would like to. Um, most of us are going to stick with the WYSIWYG editor here, um, but you will need to be familiar with the source code if and when you decide to do any, any kind of widgets on the page or um, you know, some people have put you know, scrolling marquees or things like that 
or something like a link to your you know, Facebook page or something like that. Um, all of those types of JavaScript embedding a video, uh, those would have to go directly into the source code. And if there's any questions on that, for example, embedding a video, I can show you guys how to do that um, when we get to the questions and answers. All right, um, now the rest of this is, it just kind of works like, I don't know, Microsoft Word for the most part. If you've ever edited a Microsoft Word document, you can pretty much edit your website at this point. All of these uh, buttons are, for the most part, things that you would find in a regular old text editor. For example, I can make stuff bold and italic and I can underline stuff or you know, even strike through all of these regular buttons that we would use. Um, we can make uh, bulleted lists and numbered lists. One, two, three. Change the justification. Um, change the colors. So I can change the you know, font color here. I can change highlighting colors. I can change the font size as well. Now, we do recommend, by the way, sticking with Arial font or the Arial family of fonts. That is the BNI branded font choice. So BNI branding has spent a lot of time over the years standardizing on the look and feel, and the Arial font is part of that. So we do prefer if you stick with Arial. Uh, there, the other options are there, um, but again... We prefer Arial. Um, there is one variable. This is the only variable that's available, but you'll see that TYFCB, and that's what automatically pulls your chapter's thank you for closed business from BNI Connect and inserts it into the website. Uh, some things that are unique to web that you might not have in something like Microsoft Word. Uh, let's say you want to get one of those pictures into the screen here. So let's say I want to put another picture you know, right in between these two paragraphs. To do that, click on this picture icon. It looks like a kind of a framed photo here. Now what I'm going to do is click on Browse Server. And this is going to browse the BNI Connect servers for your image. So let's say I would like this BNI Visitor icon. And it looks like it's going to be pretty big, so I want to make it a little bit smaller. I want to make this, let's say, 150, that's a little bit better. And click OK, and now I have that visitor badge there. Um, another unique thing uh, is you may want to hyperlink various things. So whether that's a picture or whether that's a word. So let's say visit a BNI meeting. Let's say I want to link that to the actual registration page. Well, I can do that by, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move that off to the side for a second. I'm going to go back to the website. I'm going to grab this hyperlink for visit this chapter. So I'm going to copy that. Now what I need to do is I'm going to highlight what I want hyperlinked, click this link button, and make sure I put in that link. I can choose um, you know, whether or not this is a, you know, just going to happen in, the, in its own window or whether I want it to be a new window or something like that. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And now you'll see it is underlined and hyperlinked. <laughs> Now, the rest of this stuff, um, you know, forms are a very specialized thing. You do have to um, house the coding for that outside of BNI Connect, but those you know, it's definitely possible to program forms. Um, when you're all set and you've got the website that you've always dreamed of, go ahead and click the Save button. It'll give you a little preview of it here, and that does look gorgeous. I'm going to click Close. And let's go check out our website. So I'm going to refresh my page here. Oh, you know what? I forgot to publish it. Let me go back now. I'm going to go ahead and publish it to make that change live. Now I can go back to the live URL, and here we go. There's our gorgeous, brand-new chapter website. And again, if I click on this link here, that should take me to the registration page for visiting the chapter. All right, and on that note, we are right 
on the dot at the bottom of the hour. Uh, so what I'd like to do is to open this up to questions. Um, for those of you that do need to leave right away at the bottom of the hour, thank you guys so much for being here with me today. Uh, for those of you that can hang out and stay and ask some questions, I welcome you to submit your questions now. Again, the best way to do that is to type the questions in to the questions panel. Just a reminder, this is being recorded, including all of the upcoming questions. So if you'd like to review those later, or if you'd like to share this video with somebody else, either in your chapter or somebody else that uh, might be interested in helping out with the webmaster position, you are welcome to do so. You'll find our videos and our webinars are on the support site. So the way to get to the support site, you see this question mark here in the upper right-hand corner? Click that question mark. That will take you over to our recently redesigned website. And right here, you'll see live and recorded webinars, or right below it, you'll see the upcoming webinars and the recorded webinars. So these are the recordings so far for May 2016. We have the five member ones. And hopefully, within the next 24 hours or so, I should have this one listed here. And there will also be a link that brings you to our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash BNI Connect Global. Um, I invite you to register there if you would like to uh, be alerted when this video is uploaded. And there's a ton of other videos up here. There's education moments and our entire series from April and earlier. So there's a few hundred videos up there on our YouTube channel. I welcome you to check it out. And finally, um, if you found that this was a good use of your time, you learned something new today, a good referral for me is to please recommend these webinars for other people. And if you'd like to, sign up for our remaining webinars from this month's series. So upcoming, we just did the chapter web pages. Next week, we have three more webinars. We have leadership team tools and reports, we have chapter goals, and we have the online renewal process for leadership teams. So we're going to be talking about all three of those next week. I welcome you to join us. All right, so let's take those questions. Does anybody have any questions at all? All right, Frank asks, um, can we add web pages? Um, Unfortunately, you are limited to the pages that you have here in the system. So um, we do not have the ability to add any pages to the chapter sites. However, um, as I kind of mentioned before, you can repurpose, like for example, the news page and really kind of make that your or make that your own. You also have the gallery page. Um, as I mentioned, some people have turned that into you know kind of a blog um, of sorts that you can use for that as well. So. Hopefully that helps. Uh, Liz says, thank you. Are you ever going to do a Facebook page training? As a matter of fact, I know that headquarters is working on that type of training now. Um, I, I do not profess to be a social media expert at all, um, so I can barely maintain my own Facebook page. Uh, but that being said, I know that that's definitely something that headquarters is working on. And you may want to just check with your region. I'm not sure what region you're in, uh, if you're in California or Idaho or um, Canada. Um, but your executive director or director consultants may already have something locally in the works. So, yeah, ch check with Vicki. Um, Liz, you're from Vermont. Check with v Vicki Wasik, and she should be able to help you out or point you in the right direction as far as a local training. All right. Thanks, Liz. Not too far away. I'm just right down here in Rhode Island, as a matter of fact. Thank goodness it's starting to warm up here in New England, finally. Uh, so Charles, Charles asks, who do we ask in order to become a webmaster? Um, the person to ask to become your webmaster is uh, either your director consultant or your regional office. Your director consultant or your regional office, the... Um, they, they are able to assign that position for you. Um, if you're not sure who your director consultant is or where your regional office is, um, just uh, you should be able to go to the, your regional website and find that information out. On your profile, right underneath this options button, there should be a button that says regional website, and that will take you to your regional website. And if you go to the contact page, you can find out your your executive director, your regional office, and they should be able to help you out with that. 
So Diane Michael. So yep, that's the person that you want to talk to. Uh, Liz says, is it spring here yet? It is starting to turn spring. We're starting to get some leaves on the trees and uh, some of the, the, the flowers are starting to, to bloom, but my garden hasn't started yet. So uh, we're not quite there, but we're getting there. Uh, Liz says she had snow two days ago. <laughs> I, I, I'm done with snow. No more snow this year until December. Um, Charles says it's 55 in North Carolina. Um, I don't know what it is here today. Today it is, again, I'm in Rhode Island, and uh, my watch is saying uh, 55 degrees also. <laughs> Liz says, talk about burr, just like my burr chapter. All right, cool. Do we have any other questions, comments, concerns, criticisms, compliments? All right. If not, thank you guys so, so very much for spending some time with me today. And again, a good referral for me is to please let your chapter know about these webinars, especially the, the member webinars. I'll do the entire series again next month, I promise. So as you get new members in, please um, you know, let them know about the webinars so that they can learn more and get started on the right foot. And with that, have a wonderful rest of the week, everyone, and happy connecting.